cool, right? All right, so LeVar Burton threatens moms of liberty for not wanting to show inappropriate content to children. Uh, this is uh, the LeVar, LeVar Burton. It's just, he's just got the same thing in the description. He's got all of his titles and stuff, but there's nothing in the description in particular that I need to be... I think I need to be concerned about. And, oh my god, coffee brand coffee. Oh my god, this guy's a... This guy works with, like, he's doing the, the, the quartering coffee bullshit. You know, the one that supports Nazis. Oh no, that's a great... Okay. All right, this video is only uh, only eight minutes long, so hopefully it doesn't give me like a tumor. <laughs> All right, let's. Hopefully we Hello, don't. Hello everyone, I'm Renown Zero, and we are back again talking about Star Trek actor LeVar Burton threatening to physically harm members of Moms for Liberty who don't want small children reading explicit material in school libraries. This comes to us from Bounding in the Comics. LeVar Burton, known for his role as Joy LaForge in Star Trek and presenting the children's show Reading Rainbow on PBS Kids, recently threatened to physically do harm to members of Moms for Liberty. According to Publishers Weekly, LeVar Burton hosted the National Book Awards and opened the ceremony by stating, quote, Before we get going, are there any Moms for Liberty in the house? No? Good. Then hands will not need to be thrown tonight. <laughs> Garbage. It's unclear what <laughs> threatened Moms for Liberty members. But Burton did recently give an interview with Esquire that was published the same day his remarks were given to at the National Book Awards. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pause him there for a second. Uh, I guess metaphor is lost on this man. Um, so should we should we double check to see what Lavar Burton actually did say? Let Let's pull it up. Let's see if we can find Lavar Burton's speech. Lavar. I don't know why, but I'm hearing, like, a ticking noise from my... Uh, let's see, this, um... What is this? What is this? Um... Here we go. LeVar Burton throws shade at Moms of Liberty. Yes. <clears throat> I, um... I had the tremendous honor of serving as Master of Ceremonies for the 70th National Book Awards in 2019, and it genuinely means the world to me to join you all again on this stage to celebrate the importance of literature to our shared culture. Um, before we get going, are there any Moms for Liberty in the house? <laughs> moms for Liberty? No? Good then hands will not need to be thrown tonight. <laughs> that is what he said. That is what he said. He's throwing shade. In, a, in the interview, he was asked, quote, in all of your advocacy work, do you hear anything from young people affected by book bans? He responded, quote, Here's the thing. I think wait, it's the he didn't, responsibility. Wait, of... wait, wait. Sturgis didn't say anything about like Lavar Burton other by, other than saying that that was a threat. It, how was that a threat? One, they weren't there. Two, he didn't say he's going to do anything. And three, throwing hands is the same as throwing shade. It's the same as like, oh, let's let's fight about this. Let's argue about this. It, it, he didn't threaten anybody. If that's the best you've got, I'm sorry. Isn't this the same group of people who are like, oh my god, they're policing our language. Oh my god, they're so worried about us being, about people being PC. Oh my god, blah, blah, blah. So that the people who are so upset about language control get immediately, like, freaked out, like they're fragile little snowflakes, is that... Yeah, it was a joke. Everyone laughed. The... Obviously, that was that was the case. But the... yeah, these are the people who are like, oh my god, do... all people these days, all those uh, libtards or whatever, they're all so fragile. The new generation is so fragile about language. Everybody's concerned. It's like, meanwhile, one group of people is like, don't throw- can, can you not use slurs? And the other group of people is like, eh, vague Ill alliteration that might be indicative of violence. Yeah, okay, whatever, bro. <laughs> that 
that's it. All right, let's keep going. The room to advocate for those kids, because in many cases they don't know what they're missing. Yeah, they're missing explicit material being read to children that should not be read to children. Such as that is very disgusting that you think that kids are missing out on this garbage. What and garbage? They won't know what they're missing because they won't get it because these people, in some cases, being successful are in some cases being successful. He added, quote, one of the yeah. things I'm most thrilled about is that hardly any candidates backed by Moms for Liberty won their races. There are bright spots, but these are people who would rather children not know the truth. No, these are people that would rather their children not be taught disgusting material that is not made for them. You are such as disgusting. And the fact that you think this material is OK makes you disgusting. Is, is Sturgis mad about the happy little penguin book? The little happy penguins are are holding hands. That one, that book. What did he talk? What what books? Those kids will never know what they're missing, but it's our job to stand up for them to be their voices and their advocates. That's what being a good night moon society means to me. What an what being an elder in society should mean to you is protect the children, leave kids alone. Stop trying to teach them sexually explicit things. You just You mean like Dr. Witnesser talking or you think you mean like churches talking and teaching kids about adultery? Like that kind of stuff? What sexually explicit material is he talking about? He won't say because the whole trick is to let viewers think of what he wants them to think, right? I mean, absolutely. That's that's a basic, basic, like low level rhetoric like rhetorical trick to let your audience fill in the blanks because it absolves like you they think it absolves them of responsibility when actually what it does is it forces more responsibility onto you for not saying what it is because that is irresponsible disgusting piece of human garbage that's what you are He's, he According sounds so convicted website, what the organization opposes is Sexually explicit material at school libraries. Their website notes they oppose books in school libraries that have graphics showing questionable things, not in a medical and educational way, extreme profanity, detailed descriptions of these different things, and all these other different things, and teaching kids how to use <laughs> these apps and what websites to use. Who wrote this? It sounds Speaking like with Newsweek it, last November. It sounds like somebody who's probably a little bit illiterate, like their reading grade is a little bit too low. Is <laughs> Moms of Liberty co-founder Tiffany Justice told the outlet, quote, we're not looking to ban any books. She then referenced calls for Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett's book to be canceled. There were people that don't that would want be banning book books. Publish. That's banning books. Our moms are saying, write the book, publish the book, print the book, sell the book, wherever you like to sell it, but don't put it in a public school library if it has explicit content in it. It's not very hard. Don't put it in a public a library. Not libraries aren't for children. Libraries are for everybody. There's a library in uh in the town that I lived in that had the the school library, the the um the public school. Well, sorry, it was a it was a Catholic school, but public Catholic schools in Canada are a little different. Um, it was a Catholic school, and their library was a, a high school was also a public library. Anybody could go into it. So, don't put the book here, aka ban the book, right? Yeah, that's banning books, and you're banning them from the public library, meaning that the book is only accessible through a fee at a store, maybe. But if they're wanting to ban the book from all public places, then it would not be available in any, like, storefront. You'd have to go, like, searching the dark web for it or some shit. Like, the, the library is not a place for ch children exclusively. That's not what libraries are for. Hard. I don't know why this is such a hard thing for these weirdos to realize. Stop trying to sexualize children. It is gross. That's you! The organization also responds to Burton's threat <laughs> writing on X, quote, American moms weep as a childhood favorite reading rainbow calls for attacks against us because we are protecting the innocence of our children. Yeah, because, that's, Burton, why have you... because that's not what you're doing. And you can't keep your children innocent forever. They have to grow up. They have to learn about things 
eventually, and what you're doing is setting them up for, for failure with no information whatsoever. This is, like, there are statistics about this. There are studies that have been done about this, in particular when it comes to sexual education. The, the less sexual education that you have, the higher the risk of STDs and the higher the risk of unwanted pregnancies. The, the, just the higher the num those numbers are, there will be more abortions, more whether legal or not. There will be more pregnant kids or teenagers who don't want to be pregnant. There will be more STDs if you do not educate people or inform people about how to avoid these things and what they are. They, this is well-established information. It's not even in question. Every local library in the UK always has a kids section. That kids section even has little chairs and seats separated for kids and parents to read with them. Yeah, in Canada, there's usually a- like, even most bookstores have a separated kids section. It doesn't prevent a kid who is unattended or a, a, an absentee parent from letting their kid loose in a library because some parents are assholes and who will treat a library as if it is, like, a, a daycare and, like, just ignore their kid and, like, the, it's not the, the, sta the library staff's job to eagle-eye your kids and stop them from stumbling into, like, the porn section or, like, the, the romance- the, the romance section that's got, like, pretty sexually explicit description about what's going on. Stuff about, you know, undulating abs and things. Sunk so low. Threatening harm against women? Yeah, he would, Burn no. Burn strangers to insane comments and threats such as this one. Back insane? In that cancel culture was misnamed and should instead be called consequence culture. In During some cases, yeah. Review, I would agree with that. The most dog shit show on television. Burton was asked about the Dr. Seuss and state discontinuing six of their books. He said, quote, It's interesting because I just, for the Seuss Set Foundation, did a voiceover for a video that they have put together to remind us that Dr. Seuss is more than simply a company that's decided to put a couple books on the shelf to take them out of that rotation. That man, Theodore Giselle, is responsible for generations of wholesome, healthy, wonderful, imaginative, creative content for children of all ages, and I think we need to put things in perspective. <laughs> the view, the, the, the trashy crap that mom, oh, the Moms of Liberty, oh, you mean the, the romance novels? <laughs> yep. In terms of cancel culture, I think it's misnamed. That's a misnomer. I think we have a consequence culture, and that consequences are finally encompassing everybody in society, whereas they haven't ever been in this country. No, it's only affecting yeah. one side. <laughs> it's only affecting... Really? And why is that? Why is it only affecting one side? Didn't... Didn't LeVar Burton just agree with that? Didn't LeVar... Didn't he just read... He just read that LeVar Burton said that now these consequences are affecting everybody, implying that they weren't affecting everybody before, which would mean that it w it might be proportionately affecting one side, Sturgis. <laughs> Imagine that. Affecting people who aren't on the left. <laughs> so no, it's not affecting everybody. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, Sturgis, but if you're a racist, there's going to be consequences to being racist. The society. It clearly isn't encompassing you because you want books that are have disgusting content that children should not be seeing. Such as? Be in schools. Such as? <laughs> Garbage. Get garbage. I think that there are good signs that are happening in the culture right now, and I think it has everything to do with a new awareness on people who are simply unaware of the real nature of life in this country for people who have been othered since this nation began, Burton concluded. I will always say this. You are a garbage human being. <laughs> for you to sit up here and believe that someone like Gina Carano should have been canceled for her opinions is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> he sounds so convicted. He sounds so, like, he's so real about this. How dare LeVar Burton want books to exist and kids to learn to read good. What an asshole. <laughs> Burton also previously indicated he assumes the worst in white people know more than they do of him. That's an assumption that you decided to make. But if you're going what? to sit up here and advocate for these disgusting books... That's not an assumption, dude. That's not what it... <laughs> That's not a, that's a self-assessment, not an assumption, you fucking clown! 
<laughs> that's one of his go-to insults. What being being garbage? I is that one of his go-to insults or his only go-to insult? Because it's I'm getting the vibe that it's just the oh well on the plus side at least we're all in a garbage we're or we're all goblins in a garbage can here so we're all we're all good to go. Sturgis is the type of person that LeVar Burton, or like people like LeVar Burton, want to not like him. Like, I would be remiss if I found out that Sturgis liked me. Because I'd be like, what are you talking about? Why? How could you possibly like me? I... <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's not... He, he's describing not at all what was said. <laughs> If you're going to sit up here and advocate for these disgusting books, I'm going to look at you funny. I'm going to assume <laughs> you are a P to the E to the D to the O, or you are P do adjacent. Okay, Why? Based on what? <laughs> you need you need tell Elmo. You need to establish what the fuck you're talking about. Are you talking about these books? And how does that correlate? To being a P to the E to the D to the O, my guy, my dude, my buddy, my friend, my pal. <laughs> oh, Stur just likes me. What the fuck did I do wrong? Yeah, exactly. And Burton, quote, is it possible that you just assumed the worst about white people do to their race? He responded, no more that white people do me because of mine. Well, that's pretty racist of you to assume that. Because again, you're a piece of garbage. <laughs> what do you make right. of Burn threatening these people? <laughs> this, maybe, maybe Sturgis needs to spend more time watching things like Reading Rainbow. That might might be the case. I think he's a piece of garbage. I think Lavar Lavar Burton has always been a piece of garbage. Considering now he's <laughs> just like your okay opinion, to say the man. Things that he says about other people. What disgusting people things? Say, and it's when? really disgusting that he thinks. That again, disgusting material should be shown to kids. That's what, what this guy this? believes. He believes that explicit content should be shown to children. Where? And it's, I don't understand why it's not that simple to simply say, leave the kids alone, stop showing them this disgusting content, and go about your business. If you want to sell this content to adults, fine. But for you to sit up here and think that people are, quote, banning books that kids should see when they shouldn't be seeing it when they're five, six, seven years old, you are a disgusting piece of human trash. My God, how dare LeVar Burton say kids should learn to read good and that people should leave kids alone. What a, what a monster. <sighs> and I hope you simply just go away. That's it. I just want Why did, yeah, that's a good question, Mr. Sears. Why did Sturgis always think LeVar Burton was a piece of trash? I would love to know. <laughs> I'd love to know the thought process behind that. I want you to go away, stop talking about this nonsense, stop trying to push this garbage onto children, and essentially leave children alone. Thank you all for checking <laughs> out this video. I really do appreciate all the new subscribers, returning subscribers, new viewers, returning viewers. I appreciate yeah, no everyone problem. who watches all the videos, even if it's something <laughs> they're not fully in. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba microphone back on maybe i'm going to, maybe i'm a little bit out out of the maybe i'm going a little bit out on a limb here but this this one bit in the video that we just watched um about when he read lavar burton's response right lavar uh to that that tweet where he said i'm only like or do you think you're being like racist towards white people or you think you're treating white people differently and he said no more differently than they've ever treated me the reason why Sturgis thinks that it that is racist is is projection because Sturgis assumes white people a, a black person would view a white person as racist probably because he's racist like like Sturgis Sturgis is tattling on himself here Sturgis is racist 
therefore, and would treat a black person like LeVar Burton poorly. Therefore, when LeVar Burton says, I would treat a white person essentially the same way they treat me, Sturgis assumes that to mean that LeVar Burton is racist against him. That's... that's what that means. If you guys didn't catch that. So... <laughs> let me know what you think. <laughs>